Nevada, the great silver state and the gold. New tales of Nevada, the stories, people working hard to make a home. Old tales of Nevada. Hey everybody, welcome to Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. Dave Asher here, sitting in for the vacationing John O'Brien. We've got a great show talking about Reno's sesquicentennial. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Hugh Roy Marshall from the Marshall Men, Virginia City and Reno, Nevada. Come to introduce you to the Let Him Run Wild Horse Mustang Series. Which depicts the wild mustangs herd running free, merit its foal, the wild mustangs fighting for love. These ingots are a limited edition double struck product on one toy ounce three pine silver and are only available at the Marshall Mint, Virginia City, or Reno, Nevada. Get your piece of history today. All of us at Shoeman's Custom Cycle are ready to get you and your Harley ready for the road. From oil and tire changes to high performance engine upgrades and dyno tuning, we at Shoe Men's have got you covered with experienced factory certified mechanics and a full service machine shop loaded with parts and accessories. Shoe Men's Custom Cycle has been serving Northern Nevada since 1988. So ride on down to Shoe Men's Custom Cycle at 275 East 4th Street in downtown Reno. Shoe Men's Custom Cycle, we're the biker's bike shop. And we're back to Old Tales of Nevada, past and present. Again, Dave Asher here sitting in for John O'Brien and our co-host Hugh Roy Marshall's out of town also. So you get Larry and I today on the set. And we have a great guest. We've got Jenny Brickus, second term Reno City Council member, here to tell us about the Reno Sesquicentennial 150-year party and anniversary. Jenny, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me on. Well, thank you. We like to always start with introducing the, the person that's on the show and, uh, of of course, I forgot the first part, though we usually have Hugh Roy Marshall tell us why we do this show, and it's because this is to celebrate the history of Nevada, why Nevada is so important to the United States, and we wanted to feature people that are important to Nevada, and that's why you're here to tell us what brought you to Nevada and what you're going to do about making Nevada a better place. So again, welcome to the show. I had to do an abbreviated story about what Hugh Roy Marshall usually expounds upon here uh, at our show, but again, welcome to the set, and uh, tell us us what got you going uh, it, to become a city council member. Well, thank you. Um, first of all, thanks for having me on. Anything about history I love. I read history in my pastime. That was my undergraduate degree, essentially was a history degree, so love the topic. Um, I decided to run during the Great Recession because uh, Reno, Nevada, the state, was not doing well, and the city in particular was not positioned to weather that out. You know, boom, I like to say that boom and bust is in Nevada's DNA, mm -hmm. going back to, you know, our mining history. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it's all, the bust is always going to come, and the city government was just not positioned well to weather that out. And I have a degree in city planning. Um, I'd worked for three cities, including the city of Reno. And I just looked at um, those members on the council who were about to term out and thought that um, I, had a, I had something to offer in terms of my knowledge and understanding about how cities uh, should operate and, and move forward into what, whatever was going to come next. So that's why I, I decided to run in 2011. Well, tell us some more about that background, your education and what led you to the knowledge that thought that you could do a little bit uh, to help the, the area here? Well, um, I uh, grew up in the Bay Area, and I started my uh, undergraduate degree at Villanova University mm -hmm. outside of Philadelphia. It was a Catholic school. Um, and I had to take a language requirement, and I thought that I would um, only have to take one year of language if I took Latin. Little did I know, I really had to take two, and how much I fell in love with Latin. Wonderful. And then followed in with Greek, um, ancient Greek. And then I, I transferred to Berkeley um, and uh, just got a fuller breadth of the classics. Mm -hmm. And so um, thought I was going to become an archaeologist at, toward the end of my um, undergraduate career, but just decided that I did not want to be in some field in the Peloponnese, you know, looking at 
in scriptures on tombstones. I felt much more uh, wanting to go towards a pragmatic and practical career. Um, and so uh, my dad had been the mayor of this small town I grew up in, uh, kind of like a PTA position. Uh, so I had a little bit of knowledge about cities and thought I would like to do something public service related. So then I followed um, kind of a long story, but to the University of New Mexico, where I got my graduate degrees in uh, public administration and city planning. City planning, a degree in city planning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, knowing how, how Hugo loves education, how would you say, I love Reno in Latin? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Demot, de Reno. Well, oh, I'm so second. bad. That's oh, funny. I'm so bad. Oh, and you must be in so heaven in the, in the mineral room here in the Marshall Mansion. So uh, with, yeah. your, with your geology interest and mineral interest, this room is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, well, this really channels back my park service. Um, experience because after uh, Berkeley, instead of going off to do a dig, I moved to do two stints in the National Park Service in South Dakota in the Badlands, which, wow. uh, you know, so a lot of um, uh, fossils, fossilized minerals there. And then uh, up in the uh, Black Hills, you know, the the Black Hills gold in the home state. Right. So that was a really interesting introduction for me as a young adult to you know this sort of the world and then followed down to uh, Albuquerque Silver City and another mining town in mm -hmm. um, rural southwest New Mexico and then uh, Reno so uh, even though I grew up in the Bay Area not a big mining um, history there been around mining communities my whole life so was it your dad's influence as being a mayor that wanted you to get into the city planning and, and take that kind of education yeah I thought I was gonna go in and get a law degree but um, started taking a few classes in planning and and frankly the law which I have such an admiration for um, the law and the legal system it, it's very um, combative and planning and public policy is is just so much more uh, conciliatory, collaborative, and, and mm -hmm. really felt that that's where I wanted to be rather than the du this dualistic um, environment of the legal where uh, it's, you know, counterparty against counterparty and contracts or, you know, litigants batting, battling it out. Right. So you've got that education as a city planner, which is just amazing. And then what brought you to Reno? Well, um, my husband and I, we weren't married yet. He, we met in Albuquerque. He's a native of El Paso. We were living in a small town, southwestern uh, New Mexico, Silver City. And um, we were there for a couple years, but felt we needed to be somewhere a little bit bigger. So around uh, 1998, we started looking at the cities where the mountain met the desert, because we met in Albuquerque. He's from El Paso, gotcha. and that's that's the blend that we were looking really? for. Definition and, of Reno. Exactly. I've never heard of, I've never heard of that explanation of how somebody ended up in Reno. That's yeah. very unique. <laughs> well, you know, and size, you know, we were looking at size, Denver, Denver, Tucson, back to Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, let's look at Reno because my family's over on the other side of the hill. And I knew Reno had that geographic criteria. And, um, and I'd been here a couple times. So, um, we just, you know, it just all fell into place and no we've kidding. never looked back and it's been wonderful for Have us. Have you explored like farther into this uh, central Nevada, like Ely Elko, uh, Fallon, Fernley. Sure, we we did in the early years before our daughter hit the high school and we became track and field cross country parents uh, and and she's just finishing yeah. now so I think we're really looking forward to doing that but yeah we've been all up from the Modoc you know plateau up to Klamis Falls all down the East Spine which is you know just the most amazing territory and then and then of course you know out to Wheeler Peak and all that Arc Dome um, but we're looking forward to getting back into it a little bit more as we become. Um, empty nesters. And then, you know, the foothills, my mother's family uh, settled in the foothills uh, below Fresno in the 1880s. Mm -hmm. So that part of California history is also of interest to me. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's great. So now you're in Reno. What was the first job you got? I um, followed my husband. He was working for a, um, actually, an organization that was helping um, with affordable housing. Um, and Way then, back then? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were around, and um, and the need is only grown. Mm -hmm. And then um, I came to work for the city in 1998 when they were starting to add on planners uh, through that boom. Because, uh, you know, that boom, 2005. 2006, it feels like in many ways we're back there again. Um, now I'm sitting on the city council side before I was a staff planner helping to process a lot of that growth up to the city council. But um, 
that was my first job. Well, well, that's a great background. So you went from being inside of the city works to seeing that you could help by being in, in the city council. Yeah, I took a little bit of a breather and actually um, did a few other things, including working in affordable housing um, mm -hmm. also. So that was a nice Well, experience. I know your husband, Armando, yeah. is doing yeah. a lot of great things for the community. You guys are a great power couple here, and um, you make a great team. Thank you. So you continued that effort then when you went back to the city. You ran for, didn't you learn from having a mayor for a dad that <laughs> politics is crazy? I don't think my dad and my sister is actually on that town council ever uh, raised a dollar. And frankly, my sister got in on a write-in because, and it was kind of a snarky thing in the Bay Area. This town was 110 years old. And Which town was it's, it? It's a Area. small town called Ross. It's like 2,700 people. But um, hmm. no one decided to run for office. <laughs> <And> so <laughs> my sister went in on a write-in. And, uh, you know, be, people said, well, I want to be on the PTA. Some people are like, well, you know, I, uh, I live here part-time and I'm not in town that often. So it was kind of a funny thing. But it's it's been uh, really great for her to kind of follow in... in um, my dad's footsteps there because he was on the council or mayor for 17 years. They would rotate. And, um, and it's a neat city with a neat history. Well, interesting. So now you're in your second term, soon to be third, uh, third term. Yeah. So what was it like running the first time? What uh, what challenges did you see, and 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 what was that like to run? Well, for it's like always that? for me, um, you know, being the family balance, raising a daughter. I felt uh, she was in seventh grade at that point, so I was ready. She she was a little more autonomous, mm -hmm. and uh, took the bus home and back from school. And so uh, it was just getting out there and uh, talking to people and walking neighborhoods, which was what I love. I love love campaigning out in neighborhoods mm -hmm. because uh, with my planning background, I'm so um, focused on the built environment so I can walk into neighborhoods and see, you know, where the how the sidewalks are, how the water flows, mm -hmm. um, the street signs, what are your street signs. And, and sometimes I like I'll even go into a subdivision and maybe talk to someone and and ask who was the builder back then. And sometimes I can even guess, you know, different eras of kind of the more modern eras of, of construction. So it's it's really that. And even seeing, you know, um, yard maintenance, what trees are growing and so yeah, on. So trees, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where the city of trembling leaves. So um, love that. Um, I guess they call it retail politics um, and also talking to business leaders too and seeing mm -hmm. what contributions they're making what challenges they're seeing because a lot of them particularly on the development side need the city to be in strong partnership on the infrastructure and that's a big focus of mine what's the also. boundaries of, of, your, of your particular district Ward 1 is um, pretty much, um, well, it goes a little bit into what's known the Yori Grove neighborhood across from the Pepper Mill there, oh, okay. but pretty much it's Virginia Street to Plum Lane and then follows up to Skyline, all of Collin Ranch, oh. all the way out to um, where Patagonia and that industrial area is, more or less following along the freeway, but I have a little bit north of the freeway. I call it the Rainbow Ridge neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So you really have a wide demographic of, of businesses small small rental properties and people that, that have lived in a neighborhood for a long time. Sure, and a little bit of downtown. It's the most residential um, land use of the five wards that we have, but mm. it is, you know, one-fifth of the city's population. Wow. Well, there you have it. We've gotten to know you and your background. Uh, we're going to take a break here in a second. We're going to talk about uh, uh, the, the city, where it's going to go, and what your view is, where it came from, and where it's going to go with your planning background. And then, of course, we've got to talk about uh, the sesquicentennial and how big of an event that was for Reno to celebrate the 150th. So uh, we're really having a great conversation about Reno here. Stay tuned, folks. Uh, we've got a great show going, and we'll be right back. Buy Nevada First Gift Shop and Visitor Center at the Reno Town Mall is the place to buy local Nevada-owned products. There is over 4,000 square feet of unique items to choose from. Art, jewelry, books, music, inventions, clothing, candy, pottery, toys, even Nevada-made wine and more. Why, you can even purchase a gift basket full of Nevada-owned products. Buy Nevada First Gift Shop located at the Reno Town Mall, 4001 Virginia Street in Reno. Buy local first. Hi, I'm Paula. And I'm Dan. We're the producers of the Tanner's Marketplace Antiques and Craft Shows at the Livestock Events Center on Wells Avenue. I'd also like to tell you about our everyday location. We're at Somewhere in Time on South Virginia Street. We're Antique Antiques, booth number 46. 
You'll find paintings by Nevada artists, collectible glass, vintage jewelry, Native American jewelry and baskets, antiques and unusual to unique items. Find it all at Antique Antiques inside Somewhere in Time at 1313 South Virginia Street. Come Come see see us. us. Somewhere in Time is a place to find what will be treasured for all time. A store full of the unexpected, high-end die-cast models, vintage and antique furniture, Fenton glassware, kerosene lamps, toy trains, vintage neon, a new home decor selection, brothel and casino memorabilia, jewelry creations, and cameras in large collections throughout the store. Bring the family and find the unexpected that will be treasured for all time at Somewhere in Time on Virginia Street in Reno. Soft pastels have arrived at Boutique Elegante. Wonderful sweaters, tunics, and capris create that special look. The colors of summer in fabulous combinations. This and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Soft pastels have arrived at Boutique Elegante. Wonderful sweaters, tunics, and capris create that special look. The colors of summer in fabulous combinations. This and so much more at Boutique Elegante. And we're back to Old Tales of Nevada, past and present, talking with City Council Member Jenny Breckus about the Reno sesquicentennial and about her planning and city background. And glad to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Now, well, I'm speaking a, of, uh, of the background, yeah. you, you were talking. Now, I'm always interested because I'm a longtime resident from California. I came here similar to what you talked about. I love the mountains and the snow on the lake on one side and the open desert on the other. The, ah, it's great. But I have witnessed myself in these 40 years, you know, the boom and bust syndrome. And being that you also are a historian with a knowledge of Greek and Roman cultures which had their boom and bust, what do you think? Wow, that's a big question. (laughs) Um, You know, one would hope that the efforts to diversify our economy post um, the last Great Recession can help us feather things out a little bit better better when the next downturn comes, and it won't be so much of a dramatic um, correction or downturn. I mean, that last one was just incredible what it did to our region. Um, I think this time um, our economy is much more tilted toward California, which is the fifth largest in the country, and so maybe that magnetic attraction in whatever form it takes, you know, migrants or, or so on, is um, is going to help us weather it out a little bit more. Maybe some of the tech and the high-tech manufacturing can help us um, go uh, a little bit better rather than being in that, um, if, it, if the next bust is like Sun Cities, you know, Boomtown bust that, you know, some of what we experienced last time, we were much more tied to, say, the Phoenixes or some of the Florida communities that were built on home building. And we don't seem to be built so much on home building this time. Uh, more, you know, a lot a lot more diverse I see sustainability activity. in this one. Yeah. Uh, with the jobs that, that the Tahoe Reno Industrial Center is bringing, the, the Teslas and the and the Googles and the, the nanotechnology park, the blockchain guy that went and bought the rest of the park, there's got to be some sustainability here for the next 20, 25, 30, 40 years, um, which is really comforting for those of us that are real estate investors and business owners here in Reno. Thank you, Dave. I feel better now. Well, thank you. Okay. Yes, well, I, I study it too. But let's go back just a little bit because Reno has been built in a little bit of, I don't want to test your planning, a little chaotic. Um, I'm, I'm a lifer here. I was born in Reno. I actually went to Greenbrae Elementary. Now, can you envision this Greenbrae dead ending into what is now McCarran? And that was all farmland all the way up to the Sparks so Hospital. Right. Yeah. So, so I know that this city has been built a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. What's your opinion of the chaos that ensues in this town? Well, I think, you know, present time going forward, uh, the easy land is gone. And the um, the size poses challenges because as you get so much bigger on a region, you just have much more um, uh, infrastructure that's aging that you have to maintain. So you don't have enough to you know really help do big expansions for the outline growth and and so on. So um, a lot of competing uh, you know demands for your infrastructure mm-hmm. dollars. Mm-hmm. Typically, it it needs to be always in partnership you know with the development community. 
Um, and more so than ever, the city needs to be very positive and affirmative. This is, if we're going to grow out, this is where the next effort and our focus of police, fire, and uh, the sewer capacity, for mm-hmm. example, would mm-hmm. be. And we haven't done a lot of that in the past. We had, we were able to accommodate, you know, whatever growth came, but now it's really in partnership, particularly as we go to the outlying areas. Um, and of course, you know, our, our new master plan that I was very, um, excited to get adopted. Uh, it was a big passion of mine coming onto the council the day one. I, I felt we needed it to get done. Uh, it does want us to guide towards more infill. You know, we have a lot of um, neighborhoods that saw disinvestment that are getting reinvestment. Uh, some of that's coming with displacement, which isn't a good thing. But we also have a lot of vacant land, particularly because um, uh, commercial retail is pretty much not happening as much as it used mm-hmm. to. So we have a lot of land dedicated to that, that obsolete buildings not performing that is ready for um, housing and um, you know across the country uh, and Reno's uh, really getting following some of those norms is um, we're going to be looking at much more um, smaller and attached homes a lot of multi our multifamily is actually what's being constructed mm-hmm. the most mm. the most right now yeah the multifamily you mean like one that, that would share the same kitchen kind of yeah thing? no no apartments <laughs> apartments. Oh, apartments but all oh, products okay. believe me all okay. products mm-hmm. Um, it was about two years ago we did quite a bit of study and, and um, looking at our housing needs. And the fundamental takeaway was the housing that we will be building going forward is going to be very different than what we built in the last 30. We'll still have the single family detached, you know, on um, suburban lots, but that's going to flip over a, a little bit. Particularly, like you said, as we tie more to California with some of that diverse um, economy, we're also getting their, the affordable housing uh, problems, and that is rampant up so fast for us. Right. So that's tied us to larger metropolitans um, than uh, we were before because we haven't had a problem th- that that to this degree, you know, in the past. Sure. Is that Park Lane development, uh, is that in your district? It is. Okay. Yeah. So now yeah. I, I, I've heard there's going to be like a combination of, of, of like condos, apartments, and a, and a, a mm-hmm. small theater, maybe a small mall. And then our, our, our friend across the street, you know, the... Uh, the other shopping center, the Casazas, he, he, Casazas, yeah, Casazas yeah. Are, are doing a massive uh, renovation, and I, I figured that they would not be doing anything like that if they didn't feel, you know, the, the forward thrust of, of here's a whole community. I, I don't know how, how many people will be. Oh, That's I can't good. remember the unit count. It's it's up there. Maybe it's a good one. Yeah, mm-hmm. and there's some medical offices. So. Yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be phased. How do you say five hundred in Latin? <laughs> oh gosh, you're going to keep that. <laughs> I'm going to get it. I can do the first lines of the Odyssey if you want, but other than that, oh, I'm can you? Wow, yeah. one of my one of my favorite stories. Oh, yeah. Everyone should read it. Oh uh, yeah. Every <laughs> all the time. What's every decade? But um, anyway. Um, yeah, that's going to be a, a, a product that we haven't seen, a rebuilt, renovated, mixed-use community. It's a big lift by them, yeah. Um, yeah. but they're the same folks who are doing Ranchera, and that's moving. Mm-hmm. Ranchera. Um, what about the, the what's it called, the, the West 2nd Street project with that massive multi-billion dollar? Is yeah, that-, that one doesn't seem to be lifting off, right? unfortunately, but um, we do have someone who's been buying a lot of property mm-hmm. down there on 4th Street, some displacement with some teardowns, and they yeah. keep saying, that they're going to be bringing something forward, and I'm 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 staying optimistic on that one. We need housing in any way we can get right. it. One thing that I'm very supportive of and working uh, to see adopted by the council are these accessory dwelling units. They're just you know on a mansion like this, it might be what we're you know, built as the, the quarters for the, you know, caretakers quarters right. oh, and so yeah, on. Yeah. But even in regular yards where someone might have a 3000 or 2000 square foot home and have a child who, uh, you know, is an adult child, they can have a house in the back. Yeah, they're going to be more than just mother-in-law quarters. They, yeah. Well, but that they are that's, kind of mother-in-law yeah, that's quarters, what called, you know, yeah. the basement or, or yeah. second units. Yeah. So, um, those are, if we can get 200 of those a year, that's, that's a subdivision of 200. We don't need to, uh, t- tear down all the rabbit brush <laughs> right please don't no i uh i live in the county and they're trying to 
annex this into the city on oh, the steamboat no. area. Yeah. You know, and yeah. we fought that and won a couple times, but we'll see how that goes. So that's great on the development side. Let's switch gears and go into the sesquicentennial sure. with the rest of the show. Talk about the planning that went on in that and how much excitement the Rideau City Council had and how did the event turn out? You know, it really was a year-long um, effort. It's somewhat modeled after the state's effort because yes. the state went very big. And then um, we started looking around and realizing that it was 150 years for us from when Myron Lake, you know, put down his uh, tripod yeah, 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 yeah. and said, this, That's a big deal. this here is our place. And so it's really the founding of our place. And, and mid through it all, I am um, for the city organization. We've had an interesting incorporation history um, because we incorporated twice. <laughs> but we um, we started kicked off the celebration of our incorporation day. Also, March 16th was right. our 115 years of mm. incorporation. And we're going to keep doing a small internal celebration on that because um, you know that's that's the source of pride well, also it's very exciting it's great for Reno to have that celebration and it's, I'm just so happy to be here I'm I'm third generation of what's four or five of us now so wow. we just love this town and love the future love what the city council's doing down there and now we've got a very exciting song Larry tell us about this song that's coming up for our break well yeah I, I, I've been graced with uh, working with you Roy and, and the rest of the gang here at Old Tales for about six seven years and and so so I've incorporated some of my musical skills and one of the I wrote the theme song for the show, the new one and then I wrote a song called Reno Coming Home and in there, the, there was an old lyrical phrase that one, a DJ used to use years ago City of the Trembling Leaves and, and I know it's, it's an old it's an old uh, phrase from a, uh, I can't remember his book in 1948 Silver Clark, yeah. yes yeah. You say me. You don't know Latin, but you know that song. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I, I incorporated that several different times, as well as a little romance and mentioning the railroad. Well, and, that's great. We're going to take a break, and here's a song, and stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> Met a lady at the desert crossroad, married by the old truck key. Made a home in the railroad valley, Reno City of the Trembling Leaves. In the shadow of a Mount Rose Mountain, happy days and a family. Dear friends in the Washoe Valley, Reno City of the Trembling Leaves. Sunrise, sunshine, breeze in the trees, our home in the railroad valley. Reno City of the Trembling Leaves Sunrise, sunshine, wind and the river flow Seems I'm always leaving Reno coming home Reno coming home Reno coming home Soft pastels have arrived at Boutique Elegante. Wonderful sweaters, tunics, and capris create that special look. The colors of summer in fabulous combinations. This and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Soft pastels have arrived at Boutique Elegante. Wonderful sweaters, tunics, and capris create that special look. The colors of summer in fabulous combinations. This and so much more at Boutique Elegante. Hi, I'm Chris from Pastime at Summer in Time. Are you looking for that one-of-a-kind gift that you can't find in the big department store? I have something for all occasions. Got stuff? Need to know whether or not it has value or how to sell it? We can help with that too. Come and see me Tuesday or Wednesday at Pastime in Summer in Time at 1313 South Virginia Street in Reno. Just ask for Chris. Deluxe Travel, locally owned and operating since 1991, is the home for travel to Mexico and Central and South America. The crew at Deluxe Travel is bilingual, trustworthy, thorough, and caring. 
They will do everything possible to make your dream vacation the best it can be. Now is the time to book for winter travel. So stop by the office at 100 California Avenue or call 686-7000. You can also check us out on our website at DeluxeTravelLTD.com. At Deluxe Travel, we sell dreams. Come in and plan yours. Hi, I'm Paul White. And I'm Dan. We're the producers of the Tanner's Marketplace Antiques and Craft Shows at the Livestock Events Center on Wells Avenue. I'd also like to tell you about our everyday location. We're at Somewhere in Time on South Virginia Street. We're Antique Antiques, booth number 46. You'll find paintings by Nevada artists, collectible glass, vintage jewelry, Native American jewelry and baskets, antiques and unusual to unique items. Find it all at Antique Antiques inside Somewhere in Time at 1313 South Virginia Street. Come Come see see us. us. Hi, I'm Hugh Roy Marshall from the Marshall Mint, Virginia City and Reno, Nevada. Come to introduce you to the Let Him Run Wild Horse Mustang Series. Which depicts the wild mustangs herd running free, mare in its foal, the wild mustangs fighting for love. These ingots are a limited edition double struck product on one toy ounce three pine silver and are only available at the Marshall Mint, Virginia City or Reno, Nevada. Get your piece of history today. And we're back to Old Tales of Nevada Past and Present. That was a great song. We're talking about the Reno sesquicentennial. Larry, tell us what's, uh, what's up with that crazy song in uh, General Reno. Well, I tell you, Cesar and I, when, when we get together, you know, I say, Cesar, you know, can, can we put four, uh, four of me on, on the thing? He said, sure, you want to do that? And so, and so he's one that does all the work. I just dressed up in the costumes, and you saw Jesse Reno playing the tambourine. And then My- Myron, uh, Myron Lake was playing the piano. And then the infamous uh, conductor from our... our, um, our uh, the railroad show, yeah. Our railroad yeah. show. Oh, God, we had fun on that. That was a good oh, show. That was great. And then, of course, I'm, I'm singing in, with my American guitar. That's great. Well, that brings us back to what we're talking about here, the celebration of Reno's 150th anniversary of being a city. So what else is the city going to do, and uh, what else have you got planned for our future here in the next little bit? Well, uh, one of the initiatives is, um, you know, trying to renew our urban tree canopy. Uh, Very important. So we um, always uh, celebrate Arbor Day. We're a tree city USA, Mm -hmm. and and one of the requirements there is uh, celebrate Arbor Day. And when we we do that... um, I up and pull out a copy of *The City of Trembling Leaves* and read a little bit of the book that takes place in uh, downtown Reno, Wingfield Park. And um, that's where I got that phrase in the song, "City of the Trembling Leaves." I thought that's oh, great. What a po- and the wind blows here all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we just planted some trees uh, down in mm-hmm. Wingfield Park oh. and read that excerpt. And um, what else did we do? We did, you know, just some really neat things. One thing was a hundred and. 50 uh, citizens who impacted um, Reno, and uh, I uh, nominated uh, Chrissy Collin, uh, the descendant of the you know the Collin Ranch family Wonderful. that's oh. in my ward and area, sure. mm-hmm. and uh, her house, her homestead, um, which. Uh, is down on Mayberry Drive and surrounded by that gift by one of her uh, ancestors, uh, Mary Donnelly, you know, the open space there. Wonderful. It's just such a wonderful depiction of our mm-hmm. pioneering history. There where more or less the foothills pinch down to where the river is. You have mm-hmm. that pasture land and all is oh, owned by Washoe County. Oh, gorgeous, yeah. So she was one of our um, 150 mm-hmm. uh, citizens. But we also have people up to the present day. I think the last sure. person who was awarded 150 impacting citizen was um, our current governor. Sandoval. Wonderful. Oh. Yeah, so, so what what's become of that picture. list of 150? How was that promoted? Uh, well, it was a rollout over the course of the year, so oh, okay. 20 or so at so at a time in different uh, venues. I, we actually at Arbor Day listed and had several of people come forward. Mm-hmm. Um, deceased, um, recently deceased, uh, President Joe Crowley was one of the right. recipients mm. and. Uh, well, so, that's really yeah, exciting. Yeah. Did you did you have any influence on on the choice of the flag? I, um, at the end, was a part of that. Uh But one thing I've learned being on the city council is uh, design issues, like Uh it's public (laughs) art or flags. Uh I'll let other people bring it up to us on a recommendation and go, that sounds great or not. But I do like the flag. I think it is a good... Good luck, and uh, I'd like takes to. I'd forward. like to tell your fortune right now. Can I hold your hand? <laughs> okay, I see a great political career for you in, in, in Reno. <laughs> Thank you, you know how to answer a question. Babe. Well, and on that note, uh, after you've 
successfully completed your third term. Uh, what, what, what do you have planned after that? I really don't know. That's pretty far uh, out Yeah, there. I've got a big transition with our daughter going off to college here. Um, love the city stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, may, uh, you know, go back and do city stuff. May continue in politics. I just honestly don't, do not know. Um, but uh, in that third term, want to get Reno to a point of um, better fiscal uh, situation. Mm-hmm. Of course, we're creatures of the state, so whatever they do is they they set it for us, and yeah. we're within their parameters. But um, that and also um, sounds boring, but want to get the zoning code redone. I think that will impact oh. our physical design going forward. We need to modernize. We're beating our everyone's beating our heads up against a 1970s zoning code that's not working well for anyone. Well, we're all well, zoning counting. meaning uh, where houses can be built or where business can, uh, business. It's can the be design, created. particularly oh. sub. Subdivision design, street design, mm. all of that building design. It, it's um, it's the built environment. It's oh. the biggest influencer that well, the city has. We're, we're wrapping up this segment, and then we're going to go to some scenes from the park celebrating the sesquicentennial out there at the Aces Ball Field there, the Greater Nevada Field. And uh, that looked like a great celebration. Great to have you on the show. And we are really counting on you guys to do your job right because there is a boom coming. And it can be chaotic or it can be organized. And uh, the end result will, will, will be based on how you guys perform down there at the city council. So please keep doing what you're doing. Any last thoughts on all that? No, thanks for um, having me on. I love a history-themed uh, program because, uh, you know, the longer I get in doing the work I am is, is I am just so informed by history and uh, that knowledge I think is so critical in public policy but maybe also in you know daily life of business people and, and wonderful so well, that's what this show is about is preserving the history talking about how famous Virginia City was in the very beginning and how it helped shape the United States and how important mm-hmm. it was and that's what the message is of this show um, they're archived up at the Nevada Historical Society oh, right. so um, this is for the generations that come after us so that they know what our founders and our city uh, planners did and why we are where we are when we are so thank you for your work thanks for being on the show here today well thank and Larry, you dave and, and thanks for uh, and don't forget that this t-shirt is available over oh, at uh, oh at, i wasn't going to bring that up the new the nevada reno marketplace mall. in the reno town mall <laughs> no uh we love our new location there and uh wait till you see what we built and uh thank you everybody for stay uh, for for listening to our show and we're going to have these neat segments now of the party out at the uh, at the park well, we so we'll see show. you next week yeah Hello, everybody. We're here at the 150 celebration of Reno, Nevada. And with me, uh, and you look very familiar to me because you were on the show with me not too long ago. Yes, a couple of weeks ago. Yes. yes we did. So uh, here we are. It's actually happening. And where are we standing here, General Reno? We're standing in front of the cupcake display, which I'm sure the boys in, in the old unit in the Civil War would have loved to have one of these cupcakes. 150. Well, actually, it looks like a lot more than 150 looks like, cups. Looks like more than 150. Yeah. yeah. But but it says 150 on there. Yes. So anyway, it, this was uh, done by the El Dorado, I understand, who made all these cupcakes for us. And at 4 o'clock, which is very close to right now, uh, they're going to open it up so people can come down and, and get a cupcake in celebration of the 150th anniversary of Reno, Nevada. Have you ever visited Reno before? I in, in my dreams, I have, yes. And I, I talked to Crocker many times once he came to heaven. Uh, well, we, we have a great crowd here, out here at the Greater Nevada Field. And it's the 150th anniversary of Reno, and they're celebrating. It's the climax of the whole year. It's a wonderful event. And uh, if this was live, I'd say everybody come out. But if you come out right now, it's going to be empty. You know, <laughs> that's right. It might be a ball game, though. That's for sure. The Aces. It's a ball game. Always a ball game. In fact, part of the celebration tonight is that they're going to have a free baseball game for all the folks that showed up for the 150th. And fireworks. Yes, sirree. Fireworks later. Yes, I, I, I might be in charge of lighting the fuse. Well, you are a soldier's soldier, they say. Right. I, I was in charge of artillery, and so fireworks is very close to being artillery. Well, and you're a mathematician, so you know exactly how to uh, get them up in the air. Yes, and also dividing cupcakes. How many cupcakes can you divide? How many can you get in your mouth be, be, before they, um, 
before it gets in your beard. Well, you went to West Point. I didn't. So you figure that one out yourself. Yes, West West Point. Yeah. Uh, so, so we're going to be vi- we're going to be we're going to we're going to be we're going to be visiting people as we uh, go around here on the 150th. So stay tuned to Old Tales in Nevada, Past and Present. We're here for the 150th anniversary and birthday of Reno, Nevada. It happened May 9th, 1868, and we have the mover and shaker behind the whole thing, David Bobzian, a city council member and a good friend of our show. It's great to be here, and again, this is the last day we get to say sesquicentennial. Sesquicentennial. Look, what a turnout. This is great. This is uh, we got a great uh, weather for this. Uh, it's nice and warm, but it's not too warm, and it's a huge block party. It's a lot of fun. Absolutely, and it's good to see all the different ages and, and diversity of uh, heritages, and uh, they're all here. Yeah, everybody. It's the whole community. It's a community's event, and they're here. Everybody's proud of Reno. That's right. Yeah, That's we right. brought the general with us again uh, today. Thank you very much. It's good to see him here. Yes, Wouldn't well, have the birthday party without him, right? Well, he only makes special appearances. You have to let him know way in advance. Uh, we hopefully did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure we did. Well, well, we had a whole year to get him here. True, true, true. So uh, free free ball game uh, later. Yep. And where are the presentation is going to be, uh, Dave? Uh, out there on the field before the start of the game. Uh, we'll be out there. It's a multi-sport day for me. I'm going to go run with some folks, the Reno 150 Milers Club. They've been running 150 miles uh, every day. Well, not every day. but So I'm going to go run a mile with them after the arch and back. And then we go inside, and we have some speeches, and we recognize the governor. The governor will be here. We'll be recognizing him as a Reno people, as a Reno person. Uh, and then I'm throwing one of the first pitches, apparently. So it's a <laughs> multi-sport day. Can you get it at the home plate? I have done it before. I've had service on the mound, so we'll see if I can do it again this time. I haven't had any warming up lately, but uh, hopefully we'll, I'll throw a strike. Now, besides the governor, who else are you uh, rep- uh, recognizing as one of the people of Reno that brings us pride? Well, we have the 150, and so we'll, we'll be uh, – the names will be displayed and we're recognizing all of them tonight but um, uh, Governor Sandoval is the one that uh, we're spay- paying special tribute to tonight but we'll, we'll have some mayors here I think as well I'm hoping uh, Mayor Bob will be here and uh, Peace Farraza or Mayor-, Mayor Pete will be here as well so yeah it's a it's a full compliment all right Dave well listen thanks for spending a few more minutes you. good to see you here yeah and thank you and uh, stay tuned we'll be back with more old tales in Nevada at the 150th anniversary of Reno Right after this, we're here at the Greater Nevada Field, and I have a special guest with me right now. Uh, this is <laughs> Emily Jansen, and Emily Jansen is the new general manager of the Reno Aces. And welcome to our show, Old Tales in Nevada. We're out of celebrating the 150th anniversary of of uh, Reno, Nevada, and you're kind enough to let us use your your field. Yeah, we're honored to uh, to help Reno celebrate their 150th birthday. How long have you been in Reno now? Um, well, I've returned to Reno. I've been here one week. Uh, but before this, uh, two years ago, I lived here for four years. So very happy to be back uh, in a city that my family and I uh, all love. Wonderful. Now, what's really special about you is that you are currently the only woman general manager of minor league baseball is that is that correct of triple a baseball yes triple a baseball so that is quite the privilege for one thing but it's quite the job as well right it is yeah Um, i'm looking forward to continuing the great work the reno aces are already doing and furthering our footprint here in the community You have got to come and see our bridal designer collection here at Precision Diamonds. We bought our building, lower the overhead. That means everyday low prices to you. Buy Nevada First gift shop and visitor center at the Reno Town Mall is the place to buy local Nevada-owned products. There is over 4,000 square feet of unique items to choose from. Art, jewelry, books, music, inventions, clothing, candy, pottery, toys, even Nevada-made wine and more. Why, you can even purchase a gift basket full of Nevada-owned products. Buy Nevada First gift shop located at the Reno Town Mall, 4001 Virginia Street in Reno. Buy local first. Somewhere in Time is a place to find what will be treasured for all time. A store full of the unexpected, high-end die-cast models, vintage and antique furniture, 
Fenton glassware, kerosene lamps, toy trains, vintage neon, a new home decor selection, brothel and casino memorabilia, jewelry creations, and cameras in large collections throughout the store. Bring the family and find the unexpected that will be treasured for all time at Somewhere in Time on Virginia Street in Reno. All of us at Shoe Man's Custom Cycle are ready to get you and your Harley ready for the road. From oil and tire changes to high-performance engine upgrades and dyno tuning, we at Shoe Men's have got you covered with experienced factory certified mechanics and a full service machine shop loaded with parts and accessories. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle has been serving Northern Nevada since 1988. So ride on down to Shoe Man's Custom Cycle at 275 East 4th Street in downtown Reno. Shoe Man's Custom Cycle. We're the Bikers Bike Shop. Deluxe Travel, locally owned and operating since 1991, is the home for travel to Mexico and Central and South America. The crew at Deluxe Travel is bilingual, trustworthy, thorough, and caring. They will do everything possible to make your dream vacation the best it can be. Now is the time to book for winter travel, so stop by the office at 100 California Avenue or call 686-7000. You can also check us out on our website at DeluxeTravelLTD.com. At Deluxe Travel, we sell dreams. Come in and plan yours. You have got to come and see our bridal designer collection here at Precision Diamonds. We bought our building, lower the overhead. That means everyday low prices to you. Hi, I'm Paula. And I'm Dan. We're the producers of the Tanner's Marketplace Antiques and Craft Shows at the Livestock Events Center on Wells Avenue. I'd also like to tell you about our everyday location. We're at Somewhere in Time on South Virginia Street. We're Antique Antiques, booth number 46. You'll find paintings by Nevada artists, collectible glass, vintage jewelry, Native American jewelry and baskets, antiques and unusual to unique items. Find it all at Antique Antiques inside Somewhere in Time at 1313 South Virginia Street. Come, Come see, see us. us. With me is Alexis Hill, who is the special events director or coordinator for the city of Reno. Hi, thanks for having me. Good to have you back on our show. Yes, I'm so glad that you guys have been covering this for an entire year. Thank you for doing that. Oh, we love it because this brings us pride. Yes. Living here in Reno, Nevada, and being able to celebrate the 150th anniversary. It's very exciting. We're doing a lot of fun things today, honoring our history, looking to the future. We're releasing our new Reno flag, which is actually on my back. And so we'll be raising that this afternoon at the game. And then we've got all sorts of, there's the. <laughs> we had that on our show with uh, David a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. So we're really excited about that. We've got um, the mayor, the governor, it's going to be a really great event, and then a lot of fun things uh, for the kids, cupcakes that all made up the Reno 150 logo, and it's a big celebration because we're excited to celebrate our growing community. Yeah, well, it looks like the community has really gotten behind the celebration. Uh, I look around, and there's people everywhere. Uh, you've got the free game uh, coming up tonight. Yeah. Of course, we're going to show this uh, a couple of weeks from now, but we wanted to be here for the celebration because we wanted to show uh, our audience uh, how Reno gets behind these special events. That's awesome. Yes, we're very excited. Councilman Bob Zien wanted to make sure we celebrated Reno sesquicentennial, and we're trying to do it with our community partners. We've got an art car right here from Burning Man. So we're celebrating even our antique fire trucks here. So a lot of fun things happening. And the new flag on the back of your shirt. Turn sideways. Oh, oh did you? Oh, I missed. This is Jesse uh, Reno, by the way. How you doing? Yeah, we brought him out of retirement. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, well, listen, Alexis, thanks so much for letting us talk with you. I know you're busy today, and uh, you've done a great job. And <laughs> thank work. you very much. Right, you. Have a great afternoon. Enjoy the game. All right, I'm here with the showgirls from Hello Hollywood, at least uh, in the costumes from Hello Hollywood. You're a little young for being part of the show, right? <laughs> What's your name? Hi, I'm Keely Cobb. Keely Cobb. Lindsay Mathers. Mathers. And Cindy Heinrich. Cindy Heinrich. And you work with Karen Burns. And we've had Karen on our show, and she was farsighted enough to go out and purchase all of these costumes from Hello Hollywood, which was at the old MGM 
in the day. And she has them uh, in a big warehouse, and she brings them out on special occasions like this. And you girls get a chance to to wear them and display them and and, uh, bring back some history here in Reno, right? Yeah, that's right. So what kind of response are you getting from folks? Oh, they absolutely love us. I think we add definitely some, obviously some color and some feathers for sure to the party. So I think it's a good time. Yeah, color and beauty and the whole thing. So, but these uh, costumes are worth quite a bit of money now, aren't they? Oh, yeah, for sure. A lot of money. How many times do you get a chance to uh, put them on and uh, go out on these special events? Every, a few, probably once or twice a month now. Yeah, I'd say so, but it's it's such an experience getting to put on a costume now. Oh, it's the whole experience. The whole experience, because they're heavy, I know that. Yeah, especially the headpiece, right? Yeah. Very heavy. So now, are you uh, uh, girls all in uh, college or high school? or? Uh, uh? I graduated from college three years ago. Three years ago. Yes, okay. I graduated two years ago. Two years ago. And I'm, I'm still in college. You're still in college, yeah. so you're working your way through. And yeah. All right, so what are you doing nowadays? I own my own dance company, Around the Stage Modern Dance Company. Mm -hmm. I'm going to grad school in the fall for studying school psychology. Good. Maybe you can help our show. (laughs) And uh, what are you majoring in? I'm double majoring in electrical engineering and biomedical engineering. Not only pretty, but smart. That's That's a dynamic personality there. All right, we're taking a step back in time here. I have Myron Lake. Myron, welcome to the celebration today. Thank you very much. It's good to see what they've done with the city for the last 150 years. That's right. That's right. And Jesse again. That's right. Yes, I I caught Myron down there. He was trying to get get a couple of uh, tolls across the bridge, and I trying to explain to him that it's a different day, you know. Actually, Myron, we're not too far from where it all started. Uh, The bridge is right around the corner here. That's right, right where the Virginia Street Bridge is. Um, I had to rebuild it a couple of times back in the 1860s. Finally got it right, and um, and then I had about 12 miles of toll road there. So I um, did pretty well. You did pretty well. You became one of the richest men in America at one point. Yes, I did. I was making over $100,000 in a year just on collecting those tolls. Just amazing. And then at one point... Uh, you had all the land on this side of the river where we're standing today, Greater Nevada Field, and you sold it or gave it to Mr. Crocker, the railroad man, right? Yeah, I had a negotiation with the uh, railroad about giving them plots of land that they could sell, and what they gave me was the uh, southern side so that they assured me that they would be building the depot there, and I made a lot of money on those sales. That's right. You were a money man, that's for sure. Now, uh, you were standing in front of the Lake Mansion uh, booth here at the uh, at the celebration, but you didn't spend much time at the Lake Mansion, I understand. No, I never lived in the Lake Mansion at all. Right. I bought it um, more for my wife and my son, and I was hoping that that would help our marriage. I had a tough time uh, with being married back then and um, didn't work out too well. So I never lived in it, but Jane and Charlie did. Yeah, yeah, and, and we know where the original spot was. It's right there on California and Virginia Street. That's correct. It was there for a while. And then in 71, they moved it down to the uh, convention center in the corner there. And then, I forget the exact year, about eight or ten years ago, brought it back to downtown, which was a good move. Good move. Great spot there. And uh, actually, one of the, the, Lake, the Lake family was one of the first notorious or, 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 uh, uh, divorces of notoriety. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for coming back and seeing us. I know it, it wasn't easy to get here, but we're glad to have you back. All right, we're here with Tony Lagateta. He's the COO with the Reno Air Races. We finally got a chance to meet you here on our 150th anniversary of Reno. Yes, it's great to meet you. Thank you. Yeah, we want to have you on our show, uh, so we'll make uh, plans for that. But it's glad to see you here supporting this great celebration of Reno. You're a big part of the history of Reno. Absolutely. We, you know, This is our home. We love this city. We love this region. And we're just so happy to come out and, and uh, help support and say hi to the people. We've got a line of kids out here jumping in our plane, and it's just wonderful, yeah. So let's see, uh, the air races this year starts when? 
Uh, it's September uh, 12th through 16th. Sounds great. And uh, any new and big things going to happen? Uh, what can we look forward to? Oh, goodness. We always have always have big things going on. Uh, it is our 55th year this year. 55 years here in northern Nevada. Yeah. So we're and where are you from, Tony? I'm from Northern California originally. I graduated from UNR in uh, 97. That was it. Goes by when you're having fun, right? Yeah, so, yeah. And how long affiliated with uh, Air Racing? I came in early 2015. Okay. So you've been COO for the last year? year. Yeah, only the last year in this position. Yeah. Yes. Well, what do you think of the celebration so far? It's great. We didn't really know what to expect, but it's awesome. There's lots of people out here, and it's a lot of fun. Well, people think really well of, of the city of Reno, and uh, we have such a great uh, history here in Reno, and uh, people are starting to, I think, uh, recognize it more and more, how important we are to the uh, well-being of the United States, actually. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, great, it's a great city. We have a lot, a lot to bring. All right. We're here with uh, General Reno. He keeps getting his face on camera, <laughs> and rightly so. Uh, because the town's named after you, so uh, have have at it. Uh, but our our guest here today is uh, Kelly Rush. But you also help us on Old Tales in Nevada too. I do, I do. We run your show several times throughout the week, and uh, we just we just have a good time over there. You know, my position is just it's part time and it's very flexible. But I have two shows. One is on Monday mornings from eleven to twelve called Foodie Focus, okay. and that's all about the cuisine scene here in Reno. And then I have another one on Wednesday mornings from 10 to 11 called Rush Hour. Of course. Rush Hour, that's very clever, <laughs> yes. My, uh, today is my 50th birthday. Oh, happy birthday <laughs> to you. So what's really neat is it's on the same day as Reno. Reno's birthday. Oh, what a coincidence. Right? Yeah. What a coincidence. Reno was born May 9th, 1868. I was born May 9th, 1968. So I say I was born wow. to live here. Yes, you were. Yes, you are. And we appreciate you helping us with the show. And uh, have fun here at the celebration. Thanks so much. Okay, Kelly. We'll talk to you later. All right. We're here with Sherry Hayes-Zorn, one of our favorite people on Old Tales of Nevada. Funny finding you here at, at the Greater Nevada Field for our 150th Uh what are you doing out here? Well, as part of my job is to help promote Reno history and the state history. So we're here with a booth uh, promoting baseball, uh, the history of baseball. That is wonderful. Now, at the um, uh, Historical Society, that ugly building on the hill, like I always say, <laughs> she, yeah, right. Yeah, you're the curator of manuscripts, correct? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm, That's a very important job. It is. I actually have um, in charge of the largest collection at the Society. Um, I have t over 1,200 manuscripts. That doesn't count the Alpha collection. So my largest collection is 236 boxes. So just imagine, uh, say, maybe 2,000 papers in a box. Wow. You know, so you multiply that. So it's it's millions of documents. So it's... It's, it's an honor to be able yeah. to preserve our history. You must like to read. That's what I have to say. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, Jesse, it's the end of a beautiful day here in Reno, Nevada, celebrating our establishment as a town and having your name on it. Yes, I'm very proud. Very proud indeed. We've had a great Nevada day, like I say. Just like the sign behind us says as well. That's a Greater Nevada Field. What was this like? Yeah, I, you know, this is probably very close to where they did the whole transaction to make this Reno, right? Yeah, a actually, it was just a, a half a block away here at the train depot. Yeah. Well, you know, it's time to say goodbye and happy trails to you. I guess you're going back to the box, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, I'm going to stay here for a while. I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to go in and, and haunt some place here real quick. You're going to linger. Yes, I'm going to linger. Or float, whatever you do. Yes. Well, anyway, thanks for coming out for this special occasion and uh, being on our show earlier in the month and uh, being here uh, for our celebration of uh, Reno's 150th. It's always fun on Old Tales of Nevada, John. We want to thank the audience for being with us. Invite you back next week for another episode of Old Tales in Nevada, past and present.